than something. Hey, last week we looked in Psalm 103, and uh, I love Psalm 103. Bob, you and I were talking about how much you love it as well. If you've never really gotten into Psalm 103, you need to. It's, it's a very special psalm to me, but it's just a joy just, just to glean in it how the psalmist reflects. Well, now we're looking at Thanksgiving response. And I wanna just to start out, I wanna just read one verse, a very important verse in Psalm 116. Could you please look at verse 12? Psalm 116, verse 12. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? Now now think of that. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I'll tell you why this message, this psalm is worth looking at. Because quite honestly, and we're all guilty to one degree or another, we will come into a Thanksgiving time and we'll enjoy ourselves, but the fact is we hardly give a thought. And if we do, it's not as far as it could go. We hardly give a thought to, you know what? God has so blessed me. What do I owe him? What do I owe him? So let's pray. And let's ask the Lord to speak again to us in a great way. Heavenly Father, Lord, your will be done. I pray that we would indeed stop and ask ourselves, what will we, rem- what will we give to you? What will we render to you for everything that you've done for us? I pray in Christ's name, amen. You know, I'm so very thankful, and we've talked about this before, about things that uh, we have. Amen, brother. I mean, how how many ladies here, and men for that matter, you're thankful for a washing machine? Hey, how about indoor plumbing? How many of you have ever been in a house where it was three rooms and a path? Yeah, now, you know, I praise God, things like, that, things like flush toilets haven't been around for a long time, but I'm glad I'm living in the age where they're here and they work and water comes to the house. You don't have to draw it out of a well. And by the way, speaking of water, uh, how many of you praise God for hot water? Uh, the, uh, the Schmitz are back from their journeys and, He's preaching at Downtown Baptist today, but we got here to uh, church yesterday morning and I'm getting ready to get into my stuff and I get a text from Tim Schmidt. We don't have any hot water. So I went over there and looked and sure enough, there's a hot water heater there. It looks like it came seriously from the Nixon administration. I mean, it goes way back. So I did the only thing I knew to do. I called Roger. Hey, Roger, how would you like to help out? So he came up, we got the thing done, or he got it going, you know, and stuff. But, uh, and then he, Tim texted Roger and said, hey, we've got hot water. I'm so glad for hot water. I didn't, you know, oh no. Cold showers are character building for you. Yeah, and you're from the planet Venus, just or wherever, you know, that's, that's fine. How about vacuum cleaners? How about clothing, decent clothing? How about deodorant? How many of you have somebody sitting next to you or near you (laughs) that needs to believe in deodorant? Toothpaste, soap, that's great, that's good stuff. And I mean, you know, we could go on, new car, used car, new truck, used truck, you know, just motorcycle, whatever. Cell phones, can you you imagine? We have gotten so stuck on cell phones. By the way, if yours is on, turn it off right now. Turn the, you know, turn the ringer off. How many of you, there's one thing, spam calls. 
somehow there's this guy out there, his name is Spam, and he's talking to all of us. But you know, we, we, there's so many things that we could talk about and we do praise God for. But this is why, and especially a time like now, we need to stop and we need to recognize that what we live in now is changing and it's changing rapidly. And that's why God's people now more and more are using an interesting word that we haven't really had to think of seriously. Persecution. I was reading yesterday a synopsis of how we got to where we are in America with freedom, religious freedom. And you go back hundreds of years and you realize there are so many people out there who died because they did not have that freedom. Kings that could at the snap of a finger snuff you out. I know God is in control of his people. I understand that. But humanly speaking, take your life because you don't believe the way they want you to believe. Is that starting to sound a little familiar today? You know, you're going to think our way or we're going to let you know that we do not approve of how you think, how you talk. There, I mean, it's amazing to me that people are saying, you know, freedom of speech isn't all it's cracked up to be. In fact, really, I think it's violent and et cetera, et cetera. And I'm going, what? This is the way things are going. Now, David, when he writes here, in the 116th Psalm, starts out, I believe, he starts out with his conclusion. Now, Asaph did the very same thing in Psalm 73. Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such of as a clean heart. But as for me, and then he goes on to what he went through. But he starts out with his conclusion. David, I believe, does the same thing. Look at verse 1. He says, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. He's looking back at what God did and he starts out with his conclusion. You know what? I rejoice in this. God listened. God listened. By the way, please don't let the wicked one persuade you in this that God does not want to hear what you have to say. God listens. <laughs> Are you listening? God listens. Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Oh, I've never seen anything like that. Your eyes are not tuned to God's word. God has been busy. He was busy in the past. He is busy now. You think this, all that's coming on in this world right now is happenstance? No. Our God is pulling triggers. He is maneuvering people. He knows exactly what the end is. He foreordained it, and we just need to trust him. But we need to understand, he hears us. God is always previous. We love him, John said, 1 John 4, 19. We love him because he first loved us. And when we came to him, he knew it already. He was listening to us as we called on him. And by the way, that love that he gives us will last forever. Jeremiah 31, 3. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. How many of you have ever stopped and thought, you know what, I'm not very lovable. Now, I'm not trying to be silly right now. How many of God's people have ever stopped and said, you know what, if other people only knew me like I know me, 
God knows us, and he still loves us. Now stop and think about that. God listened, and because God listened, David responded. Look at verse two. Because, he writes, because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. My God has shown me that he's listening to me. And for that reason, for that because I understand it, it's there. He says, I'm gonna call on him as long as I live. In other words, David started a habit. It was a great habit. Now look, our pride, we gotta be careful. Our pride can get us to this, where we get this idea in our flesh, well, I can take care of this. I can handle this. First of all, no, you can't, because my Savior told me, and he tells you, without me, ye can do how much? We might look at something, and we might think, hey, piece of cake, it's okay, you know, we can have a... And the Lord comes along and says, no, no, listen. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. You might think you need to go this direction, but I'm telling you, I've got another direction I want you to go in this. David said, you know, because I recognize this. Now, by the way, down the road, did David sin? Yes, I understand that. But David had a walk with God and the walk was there mainly or in many ways because he knew God listened. Now, again, this is one of those stop and meditate on it moments. Faith Baptist, God listens. But so many believers suffer in the prayer closet. It's one of the reasons why the prayer meeting suffers. People will come to church on Sunday morning, but corporate prayer, they just don't think about. Listen, we're gonna be having a prayer time at the beginning of the new year. We're gonna be having a prayer time and there is a reason for it because God hears. Are you glad that God hears? Then please, please, Faith Baptist, let's have that reflect in what we do. I've got the sign now, it's in my office. Lord willing, next week you'll see it over the door, the double doors right there. My house shall be called a house of prayer. That is what is needed. If there's anything that this church needs to excel at next year, it's prayer. It's prayer. Because God answers prayer. David knew it. David brought his conclusion because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. Well, what really brought that out? David's condition. Look at verse three. Look at verse three. The sorrows of death compassed me. Now, I don't know what was going on at this time, but the point is, this is where David was. And the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found sorrow, excuse me, trouble and sorrow. You know, there are people here in this auditorium that have found trouble and sorrow in their lives. In fact, it might be going on right now. Now, again, this is one of those times when we just, you know, we, we, we don't sit down in the auditorium and, and we just go, you know, play pretend. That's not it. We have people here that have had tough times and are having tough times. Now, I'm brushing it with a broad brush right now. We're not gonna get specific, but the point is this. There's not a person in here that doesn't need the prayer closet to help for God's help with something in the coming week. 
You know, when, when I get those kind of phone calls where, I mean, the, the foundation feels like it's getting ready to collapse, it's hard. It's hard. David was there. Do we realize how often God's people have had to endure? We learn from Job. Yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. Boy, there's a, there's a, there's a campfire I don't like when those kind of sparks fly upward. He said in Job 14, one, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Same thing. Paul was no stranger to it. We just, we, we just finished 2 Corinthians. Hey, for when we were come into Macedonia, Paul wrote, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side without were fightings, within were fears. <laughs> We'd been here about two months. And uh, yeah, I, I'm just getting to know the place. And two sheriff's officers pull in front of the auditorium. And I said, hey guys, hey, wait, 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 wait. I said, listen, I just got here. Could you tell me what kind of neighborhood I've got? What, you know, what, what, what do I have here? So they walked me to the front and they said, okay, over here, you got your Crips and your Bloods. Over here, you got your neo-Nazis and your skinheads. And I thought, this is great. One of these days, I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna have a rumble right in front of the church. It happened. It started on Watt Avenue and worked its way here. Some of you remember Mr. Buckler. I remember Mr. Buckler looking through the window there. I mean, it was a crowd right out in front there. Yeah, you know, without were fightings and within were fears. Lord, is it gonna come this direction? He's talking about things, not just physical, but spiritual as well. Because there are times that we can see on a national level, on an international level, as well as a local level, without our fightings, Lord, what's happening within our fears? But I promise you, I promise you, God is in charge. And we can thank him. So let's, let's just stop and consider with all that is going on. Well, let's do what David did. See, David cried. David cried out. Look at verse 4. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Now, now listen. Right here is a very important time. A pivotal point that challenges the heart on where and to whom it will flee. I called upon the Lord. David wasn't looking for man to deliver him. He called on the Lord. David, what, l l l l let me bring it to this day. People say, you know, we, we've, got, we've got a great, we, we've got a, a, a great military. Military's not gonna save us. First of all, there are people that are trying to destroy it from within right now. But military doesn't, doesn't save us. What's taking place in America is happening here. I, I, I remember what Lincoln said, we must live through all time or die by suicide. Well, he was right. God is the answer. David knew it. David cried. And with this, he came to an observation Look at verse five. The first thing that he tells us is, you know what? As God worked in me, God lifted. Verse five, gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. 
The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low and he helped me. How many of you would ever, at any given time in your life, you have been brought low? My hand is up. Aren't you glad for God's faithfulness? I know it was the Lord that worked in my life. Look at verse seven. When all that happens, you can come to this point. You know what? Soul, return to thy rest, O my soul. For the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. I can stand here right now and tell you, God has been good. Now, are there still challenges? Absolutely. Are there still uncertainties from what I can see? Absolutely. Has God been merciful? Yes. Has he dealt bountifully with me? Absolutely. And he does the same for us all. Do you realize, now remember what I said last week. Christians have to have the long look. God is not a half hour television program. He doesn't bring everything to a conclusion with commercials in a half hour or an hour. No, he works in us. There is coming a time when we, those of us who have truly trusted Christ, we will be in heaven and looking back and going, praise God for what he did. That's coming. Now, I want you to meditate on this. I want you to stop and think about this. This psalm is as much to us as it is to anybody else. David is giving us personal testimony. You can trust God. Now you've got to be understanding that he's looking for you to turn to him. And if you don't know Christ as Savior, I beg of you to come to know him. Listen, there's coming a time when he's going to pull the trigger that this world is not going to believe. I was thinking about that this morning as I was on my way, as I was on my way to church. You know, sometimes it, it just, it breaks your heart. There are people that they don't want the Lord. I, um, I, I was thinking, you know, there, there's gotta be, I've thought about us getting out here and holding signs, you know, Jesus saves, et cetera, et cetera. And then finally, I thought, you know, we, we gotta have something where people are just hearing it if we're not here or not. So we got these two banners out here. And I'm gonna be putting up a third banner here pretty soon. Jesus saves, welcome. You're welcome to come and hear about it, but Jesus saves. Now, you know, we've gotten so used to saying that, but I'm so glad Jesus saves because without him, we are, like Paul said, we are of all men most miserable. We've looked and we can't trust, but we can trust. God lifted and then God liberated. Look at verse eight. For thou hast, this is, I'm not gonna take the time. This verse in itself is a great study. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. Listen to that again. For thou hast delivered. Lord, you acted in my life. But I can see how you acted. When it comes to my very being, you delivered my soul from eternal death. Remember in the Bible, death is separation. When a person dies, their spirit separates from their body. When we as Humanity sinned against God. We separated from God. God has delivered us from that. But not only that, he separated our, excuse me, he delivered our eyes from tears. You go to Revelation, there'll be no more tears. Nothing. We are looking forward to a time when there is no more Misery, because there's no more sin. Because God is love. They, you, you, ever, you ever try sometimes to paint a picture? You've gone to, um, 
you've gone to the Grand Canyon or our brother, he, you know, we, we were in Yellowstone. You, you, look at, you look at Yellowstone and it's like, man, this is unreal. But then how do you describe it to somebody? Uh, again, Brother Young was here. He was telling me, he said, he says, now don't, don't misunderstand me. I love America. He says, he says I, I love uh, yellow, no, Yosemite. He says, I loved Yosemite. But he said, they were in, they, they were at a conference in Sweden. And he said, there were five areas that looked just like Yosemite Valley. Five. He says, wherever you went, it was beautiful. Now he showed me pictures, but it's just a picture. I can't comprehend that. You know, just looking at a small picture like that. Folks, I'm gonna tell you something. And the Holy Spirit, I pray, does the rest. One day, if we've trusted Christ, we're gonna be in heaven in the presence of God. There is no more need. There is absolute love there. And we will be with him forever. Now stop and think about this. Every soul that has ever lived is still living and will always live. There's never going to come a time when you cease to exist. The only difference is where you exist. And that is why we ought to be mindful of the gospel. Look again at verse eight. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. Now praise God for this. You know, we sin and we fall but we don't fall ultimately and the Lord can raise us up. He can bring us up. Listen to the joyful heart of the man who is liberated. I will walk before the Lord, verse nine, in the land of the living. I believed, therefore have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. Now this is kind of interesting here in what Paul does, good Paul. <laughs> what David does here. We don't know again what was going on. He says, I was greatly afflicted. And then verse 11, I said in my haste, all men are liars. Now we know this, people fail us. And there have been times we have failed people. There was something that happened with David where it got so bad that all of a sudden he just blurted out, he just, you know what, all men are liars. Now, he could have settled there and just in despondency said, I'm fed up with it, that's it, I'm walking away from it, I don't wanna deal with people anymore, I am through, see ya. But he didn't. Look what he did. Instead, he purposed to cast his eyes upward. David's reaction was this, and this is what brought him to verse 12. What shall I render unto the Lord? He's looking to his God. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? Now, please, let's, let's stop and think about this. Don't let this just go by. We could sit here and contemplate on this. There's one picture that I want to just kind of cast and see what you think. Meditate on it. Here's a person. They're addressing the Lord. They says, you know, God, I, I, uh, I, I, I trusted Christ as my savior 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and I want you to know I'm really glad for it. But you know, God, I am really enthralled in this life that you gave me here. 
And I'm telling, I, I got so many things to do. I'm, I'm, I'm so busy. I'm having a ball. But Lord, I just want you to know that when I get to heaven, I'm going to thank you for all eternity. That's not what David was doing. David is thinking, you know, right now, what can I do for the Lord? So let's stop and think about this. What have we thought of in the last week and the last month? Has there been a time when we thought, you know, Lord, I am so glad for my salvation. What would you like for me to do? Now, but now please, 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 please think about that. This is why this, this has been such a blessing to study. This is David's response continued. What shall I do right now? Remember what Jesus said? If you love me, keep my what? Now think about that. If you love me, keep my commandments. You know, I was reading, I finished up the book of Galatians this morning. Boy, I just, man, I love the book of Galatians. And I got to thinking about, you know, some things that Paul had mentioned. He so loved the Lord and everything that he was doing for the Lord and how he was encouraging others to be thinking about all that. You know, he made mention about presenting the people that he served perfect in Christ. And you know, that, that's really, you know, that's what a pastor thinks about. I'm thinking about the time, let me just pick on Brother Reyes. I'm thinking about the time that Brother Reyes is going to stand before the Lord. You know, he and I can kid back and forth, but the real thing is when it comes to our relationship, I want to see, I, I want to be an encouragement to Brother Reyes in his Christian walk. I want to see him grow. It's not me, it's the Lord, but I want to be used of God to do just that. Not for my glory, but for his, because again, without me, ye can do how much? Nothing. And it's, and it's the same thing with every one of you. This is why we're in the word of God. There's not a Quran here, and that's for a good reason. This is the inspired, infallible word of God. Our God has directed, and it's this that brings us to completion. And so I want to see Brother Mike Hale. Same thing, his son, Brian. On and on and on, all of us. And by the way, we ought to see each other like that. Amen? Amen. Now, some of you I look at and I go, you know, can it really happen? Of course it can. I'm just, I'm, now I'm getting stupid. Somebody give me my medicine and I'll finish and there will be great. Look at what David's response is and we'll be done with this. Number one, I will pray. I will pray. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Our Lord wants us to pray. Hey, Luke 11 Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. He says, I will pray. I will take the cup of salvation, what God has given me, and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pray. Secondly, I will pay. Look at verse 14. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Now, you might think, well, wait a minute. I didn't make any vows. Yes, you did. Is he Lord of your life? If he's Lord, you owe him. If he's not Lord, you've got a major problem. 
you've got a major, major problem. I will pay. Verse 15. Now, this is kind of interesting. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Now, I got to really studying this, and I looked up several people, and most of them say the same thing. That what what David is saying here, and with our translation, it doesn't come through, not quite, it, it means to make rare. Rare in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. In other words, it's something that God is not, he's not oblivious to. When he calls a saint home, he has reason for it. But before he does that, he's going to protect because of our service. I find that wonderful. That is, good men are so precious in God's esteem, as this Dr. Wells put, that he will not prematurely deliver them up to the power of death. I will pray, I will pay, and then I will perform. Look at verse 16. O Lord, truly, I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thy handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. Lord, you set me free. Because of that, I am volunteering. I am coming to you, and I desire to be your slave. You set me free from sin. You set me free from death and hell. You set me free from all that. Lord, for that reason, I am absolutely yours. And then lastly, I will praise I will offer to thee the thanks, the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people, the courts of the Lord's house in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem. Praise ye the Lord. He says, join me. Praise the Lord. I'm giving you, Lord, the sacrifice of thanksgiving. That is what I owe you. What a joy. What a joy. You know, we look in our hymn books and there's stories all through that behind those songs. I often wonder or often think that, you know, I I wish we would have a hymn book that actually has the story behind a particular hymn. There's one in our hymn book called My Redeemer. The story is not behind it in the hymn book, but it is an interesting one. There's a man by the name of Philip Bliss. Some people call him just P.P. Bliss. He wrote a song. He wrote this song. But it was found after he was dead. It was found literally in a train wreck. He had a testimony. There's a man by the name of George Stebbins who talked about bliss one time and he said, there has been no writer of verse since his time who has shown such a grasp of the fundamental truths of the gospel or such a gift of putting them into poetic and singular, sing, singable, excuse me, form. But at age 38, Bliss's life was ended in a train accident. He'd been visiting his mother in Rome, Pennsylvania during the Christmas season of 1876. He was returning by train to Chicago on December 29th with his wife, Lucy, when there was a railroad bridge that collapsed The train plunged 60 feet below, but that's not the worst thing. It caught fire. He was able to escape, but his wife did not. He went back into the train and died with her in the flames. As they took everything 
through, they sifted through all that they were finding in the train. There were witnesses that knew that he made it out and went back in. They never found their bodies, never did. I don't know why, but they found his luggage. And a, among those things there was this song. I will sing of my Redeemer and his wondrous love to me. On the cruel cross he suffered from the curse to set me free. I will tell the wondrous story how my lost estate to save in his boundless love and mercy he the ransom freely gave. I will praise my dear Redeemer, his triumph and power. I'll tell how the victory he giveth over sin and death and hell. I will sing of my Redeemer and his heavenly love to me. He from death to life hath brought me, Son of God, with him to be. Sing, O oh, sing of my Redeemer. With his blood he purchased me. On the cross he sealed my pardon, paid the debt, made me free. There it is. You know, folks, this, this preacher can't paint the picture like it really is. But I tell you what, I can encourage you to do this, us all to do this. We take the time and we stop. Maybe even before the day is over and we consider what God has done through Christ. We're gonna be in the second, in the middle part of Colossians chapter one tonight. It's stunning how Paul uplifts Christ. I mean, I called it Paul's love letter to the, book of, to the people of Colossae last week or two weeks ago. But it was, it, it's, it's amazing how he lifts Christ up. And it's really more of a love letter about Jesus. That's that song right there, I will sing of my redeemer. I, 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 I fail at painting the picture as it ought to be, but I'm telling you now, we have a Jesus that is worth being thankful for. We have a salvation that is simple, yet forever, forever powerful. Because your sin and mine are forgiven. They're gone as, east, as far as the east is from the west. What a thing to be thankful for. And we will live in eternity with him. Praise be to God for his unspeakable gift. So, we sit back and we think about this. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? That's a good question, isn't it? I pray that we respond like David did. I will pay, I will pray, I will praise, 